if any of you uh, have taken any theology, you would know that there has been a, um, a discussion or argument about whether Mary actually died or whether she just went directly into heaven, whether she just fell asleep, the dormition, or whether she actually died. You remember the little girl that had died, that Jesus had risen as a miracle in the gospel? Do you remember what Jesus says about her? He says, she's not dead, but she sleeps. That is, that it was a death in which she could wake up from. It's not a death of dying in an actual grave sin in which no one wakes up again from. That's the second death. This speaks of a sleep of death in which one can wake up from. It's not that difficult to understand. But in regards to Mary, fundamental theology actually speaks of either she having a dormition or actually dying. The dogma is one, that is, Mary was assumed into heaven both in body and soul. Then John Paul II says it in one way, John the Twenty-Third in another, Pius the Twelfth a little bit differently. But at least let's hear what uh, Pius the Twelfth said in the dogma. The Holy Mother of God suffered temporal death, but still could not be kept down by the bonds of death. Who has begotten your Son, our Lord incarnate from himself? You see here, it refers to Mary as having died. Mary has received an eternal incorruptibility in the body, together with him who has raised her up from the tomb and has taken her up to himself in a way only known to him. So he says here that uh, she dies, a death that she can wake up from and be risen from. So when we use the terminology Mary assumed into heaven, we don't say she resurrected to avoid confusion with the resurrection of Jesus. So Jesus is always the primary and foundational reference. Everything else, the church, the saints, everything comes after Christ's resurrection. Saint Pio of Petrecina says, always within the modern period, the love of God reached its greatest condensity in the heart of Mary in such a way that it could no longer be contained in a mortal creature. And so the soul of this divine dove was freed from the bonds of her holy body and flew towards her beloved. You remember what we said about the great eagle's wings a little earlier? Here it speaks about this dove who freed from her holy body. Look at how precise Padre Pio is. He says that the, the soul of this divine body flew towards the heights, freed from her body left here. But then he says immediately later that just as her body was never for one instant slave of sin or the devil, in the same way neither could her body be a slave of corruption. Therefore, as we know that corruption happens already 45, 50 hours after death, Mary, on the other hand, was never touched by corruption and flies, that is, with her body. The Catechism of the Catholic Church says that the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin is a singular participation in her Son's resurrection and an anticipation of the resurrection of other Christians. You see, it doesn't only talk about Christ, but but also Christians. Jesus says, who eats my body and drinks my blood has eternal life. That's, that's present tense. And I will resurrect him. I will have him stand up again. That is future tense. That's at the end of time, not at the moment of death. Words of Jesus.